Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is a magnetar, an extremely powerful neutron star with a ridiculously powerful magnetic field. It would most likely kill you at this distance. And today we will discuss the study that may have figured out how all of this is created in the universe. In other words, we may have finally solved the mystery of their origin. Welcome to What the Math. I wanted to start this video with a little visualization of, okay, this is a moon being destroyed by Earth by tidal effects, not exactly what I wanted to start with. I wanted to put a neutron star next to our planet just to give you an idea at which distance it's very likely pretty much most of us would perish almost instantly. And first of all, at this distance, pretty much all of the technology would cease to exist. Everything would be completely demagnetized and nothing would work anymore. There's that neutron star that's roughly around 1.4 masses of the sun. Now, if I were to move it to a distance of about 1000 kilometers away from Earth, although technically we should be moving Earth here because Earth is way, way less massive. So here comes Earth, it's slowly um, approaching the neutron star that's right there, right in the middle. You can even see how everything is being sucked into it right now. But at this distance, you can see that the tidal effects are so great that they literally destroy our planet. And um, that's not even the worst part here. The worst part is the actual magnetic effects themselves. The magnetic field of this object is so strong that it would literally... Okay, I just destroyed it by accident. Let's go back to the neutron star. So as I was saying, at this distance, the effects of this neutron star would literally make everything inside your body stop working. The magnetic field here would be so extremely high that every single life process in your body would just stop completely. You would literally just cease to exist. You would die instantly. Now, talk about instant death, right? But there are actually a few things about magnetars that are a little bit different from a typical neutron star. For one, we know that magnetars on average, spin way faster. And that's probably why they have so much more magnetic field. A typical magnetar will almost always spin at least once per second or even faster. And this is probably why they have so much magnetic field because by spinning, they do create a lot of magnetic field coming from the inside. At the same time, a very unusual property that magnetars have that uh, other neutron stars don't is that they seem to produce a lot of gamma rays and a lot of x-rays, a lot of really, really powerful radiation. Um, some of these scientists suggested that this could potentially be another thing we need to watch out for because a typical magnetar can produce so much energy that it could hypothetically wipe out life on our planet. But this is going to be a topic for another video that's going to be coming up where we're going to discuss how occasionally neutron stars and specifically magnetars could have caused mass extinction events or may do so in the future. Another really unusual property of magnetars is that for the most part, they don't actually last very long. In other words, after about 10,000 years or so, they become regular neutron stars, which is why there are not that many to begin with in our galaxy because they simply just become regular neutron stars. However, the total number of these objects in the galaxy could be as high as 30 million. Most of these are already off and no longer produce magnetic energy and basically are literally just neutron stars. Nevertheless, what we need to learn about them is whether they can actually go back up to being magnetars. Can they somehow re-enable? And that could be something dangerous because a magnetar nearby would definitely cause a lot of problems for humanity. And one of these problems, or actually three of these problems, have been detected in the past. These are so-called gamma ray flares that we believe are produced by magnetars that suddenly have a kind of a star quake on their surface. So by studying these objects, we definitely will learn a lot more about the possible dangers, but also maybe even learn something in the process on how to create energy and how to use very powerful magnetic fields for the benefit of humanity. And there's actually a really important reason for us to study these objects, mostly because the physics near them becomes completely incomprehensible. For example, here the magnetic field is so powerful that it actually turns vacuum itself into a polarized thing. The vacuum is no longer vacuum. It starts acting as something completely different. And even the atoms themselves start stretching so much that they turn into really, really long objects. For example, um, various atoms of hydrogen that is still present here would turn into these long needles 200 to maybe 300 times longer than usual. 
So in a nutshell, the effects here are so dramatic and so extreme that we would want to understand what happens because we could technically produce very high magnetic fields on Earth and maybe by producing these fields or something close to these fields here on Earth, we would be able to learn a lot more about science involved and of course about the effects that they produce. But because magnetars are the most powerful magnets in the universe, we are not even close to being able to produce anything as powerful. These objects are just really really extreme. And all of this is of course due to the nature of the neutron star, an extremely extremely dense object that is capable of producing effects that we just don't see anywhere else in the universe. But because this is not something we can easily produce in a lab, their mysteries will remain mysterious to us for a very long time. But anyway, so these are the magnetars, these are extremely extremely powerful objects, and for some reason there are just not that many of them out there. And we've always had trouble explaining how they form. Scientists had ideas, but the computers were not powerful enough to test those ideas. Until now. And so the study that was just released in Nature magazine that you can also find in the description below created the simulation finally showing us what may happen to create these objects. Now this is still a theory, it's not actually proven yet, but it's a very solid theory. What you're looking at is a collision between two really really massive stars. And we're talking about several masses of the sun and both of them coming together and forming one gigantic star. And they create this very unusual but extremely magnetically powerful star known as a blue straggler. We've seen quite a lot of these blue stragglers out there, and this is one of the ones they've studied, this is Tau Scorpii, and they usually all exhibit very similar patterns. First of all, they um, tend to exist in global clusters, like this one right here, this is 47 Tucane, and you can see that there are a few blue stragglers there as well. We, we can actually kind of try to come up on one of them. It's called blue hypergiant here, but these are essentially blue stragglers. And for the most part, they all exhibit a very similar pattern. With time, they come um, closer and closer to the center of the um, actual global cluster, and eventually they turn into unusual objects. And now we think that these unusual objects are the magnetars. In other words, the study um, is almost positive that it's these blue stragglers that when they go supernova create magnetars simply because the original magnetic field of these stars is so extremely high. In other words, the process here is really simple. We can summarize all of this in a few steps. So we have these two really massive stars, very likely O-type or possibly B-type stars. Just to give you an example, here's what our sun looks like in comparison to these giants. And as they orbit around one another, they eventually collide into a single, very large, very massive and extremely magnetized object that um, is essentially the so-called blue straggler. This gigantic and extremely powerful object eventually lives out its life, straggles around and goes supernova. Which of course creates the uh, leftover behind and this leftover is the neutron star, but in this case because it's so extremely magnetic, it's actually a magnetar. And it's extremely powerful, it's very very energetic and produces so many different effects that even today we're still kind of struggling explaining all of them. Now magnetars are extremely mysterious even today, mostly because there's just not that many that we've found, but um, we will eventually be able to explain everything we're observing. But luckily to this paper, we may have finally found their origins and we may have found at least one solution to one of the mysteries. But because these objects are so rare, we are very unlikely to actually see them made in real time. In other words, even though we've seen other neutron stars being created, the blue stragglers are already very rare. And so for a blue straggler to go supernova and create an actual magnetar in front of our eyes, we would have to get very very lucky. It's probably not going to happen in our lifetimes. Nevertheless though, it's a very interesting study, a very cool discovery, and being able to use very powerful computers to find uh, solutions to these kinds of problems is really what makes modern science so beautiful and so wonderful. Anyway, so that's kind of all we have discovered from this particular paper, but once we learn more, I'll definitely make sure to follow this up with another video regarding magnetars or blue stragglers. Check out some of the other neutron star videos I made previously and maybe even check out the video about blue stragglers where I explain them in a little bit more detail. But for now, that's really it. Thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out and as always, bye bye.